We have Stuart Senek, he's now the American Hatcher. Um, I have a, a written statement, and uh, my topic was about the American Pageant book that was voted on last meeting. Uh, okay. Thank you for the time. My name is Stuart Senek. I was at the last school board meeting. I saw the board cowardly vote four to two in favor of a textbook with a bias in presenting American history. What is this bias? Some would say it was, it was left-leaning. We speak in so many cliches. I would like to accomplish something here tonight. I would like to explain to you why you like a book obviously redefining American history and defaming its heroes. One thing we all have in common is that we all have similar issues as we grow up. Somewhere in our past, we all have had our innocence snatched from us by some form of injustice. There are two ways to deal with injustice. We either strengthen ourselves to make ourselves better, stronger people, or we seek to change the world around us so as not to suffer the trauma again. It could be a good thing to change the world, but change it to what? Change it back to an original design and intent where justice would reign, or change it according to our own intellectual study with no respect for our elders and forefathers and the principles they adhered to. It can be defined as a rebellion of sorts. Instead of physical and violent, it is more subtle yet intellectual. This sort of movement gains strength when it finds fellow sufferers, if you will. So our intellectual teachers find similar professors who have no respect for the foundations of this country and get a textbook full of these biases and their philosophy of life. The mind that is altered alters all. This is a world where there is no God, but only what we think best suits the fashion of the day. There is one problem. 30 seconds. Most of these people we read about in these history texts had faith in something greater than themselves. It gave them the strength and courage to carry on and live those great lives recorded in history. I dare say if you replace some of these great people with the modern day intellectual, the job wouldn't have gotten done. You can't get courage from your intellect. So if you can't be like these great people, you cowardly defame them so as not to seem lesser by comparison. Thank you very much. You teach children not only what you want them to Mr. learn, Lawrence, thank you, very much. you teach them what thank you, you want them to believe. Next. Shouldn't we give our youth the opportunity to be inspired by great people without the filter of jealousy, envy, deceit, and bias? There is your American pageant and an unspoken conspiracy to silent the truth. Thank you. Uh, I'm inspired, to be honest with you, about the passion for alternative education. And, you know, charters were created to wake up public school people because of people's dissatisfaction with public education. And the factory model of public education doesn't work anymore. And I'll be the first one to say it and said it since you all talked to me this time last year in my interviews. Um, I have some experience in doing alternative education. About summer of 13, my superintendent called me in when I was a, an assistant superintendent. I, I supervised one of the lowest performing middle school in the state of Kentucky. And she said, I want you to think charter like and do something different with this middle school. So we ultimately created a sixth grade only academy with a lot of the, none of this is new. I mean, Montessori's been around, Extended Day's been around, Summer Bridge has been around. We had to package it differently so that give give parents something that they would want. And ultimately took a proposal to the board uh, that, that got passed and that school's now functioning and, and in its infancy, but it's, it's going well. Now when I talk about, you know, when they talk about STEM and project-based learning, I get all that. And that these are exactly the concepts we're talking about with the whole pathway idea. And while I'm going to start, we're going to start really with the high schools first. Um, we have to make high school more engaging. So when, when you talk about 
uh, uh, kids being bored and not engaged in the process, that is our job, is to really create pathways that address every kind of learner there is. And everything from your really artsy kids to your really high tech kids to pre-engineering. Right now we're exploring Project Lead the Way, which is a national pre-engineering curriculum uh, that really gets into all the STEM concepts. And then I've asked our middle school folks, uh, what can we do in middle schools? And, and they're excited about it. I'm talking about uh, Hendrick and McLaughlin, about molding their programming around these kind of pathway ideas that, that we've been talking about. So Project Lead Way pre-engineering is something we want to embark on this coming year. As, uh, as is Project Lead Way Biomedical, which is another really high-end science curriculum for kids that are interested in medicine. And so the idea is that I want to start with with high school. We'll filter down and hopefully become more individualized where kids have choice. There's something about what I call, you talk about creaming, I call it creaming for commitment. When you have people that are passionate about something, you know, people that are passionate about music and get their kids into music programs, obviously support that educational process all along the way. The kids are going to take classes they sometimes don't enjoy. But if they can get to the ones that really turn them on or the type of learning that turns them on, that's what we should be doing. So again, the, 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 I, will, I will be the first to challenge the, the factory model of school. And um, what's, what's great about it is that we create similar programming. Hopefully we'll have 80, 90 people showing up to support the programming that we can offer. And, and that's really where I want to go. So uh, don't, don't uh, you know, for a minute uh, begrudge that. I think it's inspirational that, um, that for all of us to really look at what people desire in the world of education these days. So uh, we need to take it as a lesson learned, in my opinion, and then look ourselves in the mirror and have courage to make, do things differently. And that's for all the principals. They've heard this before. Uh, they're out there not. We do. We, and it's going to take a little time. You know, we're a little bigger ship to, to turn. And we're dealing with 100, 100 and something years of traditions that, that we have to break. And, you know, the, the schools, public schools are probably the most um, cultural institutions in the United States that, that have remained much the same. And we all have to be, uh, be willing to challenge the status quo. And it, and it starts with us right here. So I appreciate your support. Thank you.